Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my latest vlog of knives video, and you're at the We All Juggle Knives channel. Are you addicted to steel? Are you a steel junkie? Do you need your fix? Well, you are going to get that here today. I've had a lot of good feedback on this type of video where I show you many, many options quickly. Right? People really like it because if I show 20 different items, you know, you're, you're bound to find at least a few that suit your needs. Right? And if you have any questions on any of this stuff, of course, you can always ask. And if enough people request, you know, I'll even do an extensive review of uh, individual items in the video. So in this episode, we're going to talk about Ontario Knife Company. That's one of my go-to brands, right? We also got a new Condor in the house, some Kaiser folders, all kinds of crazy stuff. Bastinelli Creations. I got a knife from Finland. I got a knife from Spain. I even got a giant meat cleaver. Oh, and in the text description box, you'll see basically kind of like a table of contents. Those are affiliate links, and uh, I'm going to list them in kind of the same order that I show the items in the video, so that's also going to serve as a table of contents. All right, so first up, Ontario Knife Company. Check this out. This is one of my most used knives. Yeah, an actual user. People always ask, uh, what, what do gear reviewers use? You know, you, get, you can choose from so many knives. What, what do you use? Uh, this is one that I actually use and have used for many years, right? They do not make this anymore. Okay, Ontario Knives, if you happen to see this video, I have one request, one request. Please bring back the Ontario Afghan. All right, this thing, such a freaking beast. First of all, look how thick this is. You know, uh, yeah, I think this would still sell well today. I mean, I can vouch for this knife. Uh, that's a knife. Hey, that knife's all beat up. No, man, that's a knife with character. Right, so it, okay, see, please bring back the Afghan. Yeah, one of my favorite knives of all time. Let's talk about OKC. That stands for Ontario Knife Company. Right, it is a, a U.S. company. And I've got to say, I highly recommend this company and most of its products. Uh, they've never let me down. They, I've never gotten bad quality from this company. Both, what's good about them, one, the range of products. Like, they have a lot of variation, no matter if you need some outdoor stuff. The, a lot of these are military knives, but they make, they have stuff that would be suitable for camping, bushcraft. It's been a while since I've purchased an OKC knife. All right, but one thing that reminded me of them, I actually did purchase a new one recently, and we'll get to that. Yes, it's in there. Which one did I choose? Yeah, so old knives like that, you know, a lot of my user knives are not even made anymore, right? So I'm not gonna buy a new OKC every week because they do last so long. Now this is an SP53. And this, again, this is one of my, my real users. You know, I, I have many to choose from. It's heavier than it looks, which is a good thing. Uh, this can, you know, easily take out a branch. This can split wood, chop branches, but yet the edge length, you can use this as a small uh, machete, right? So I highly recommend this. Now this is 5160, right? Whereas some of the others are like, uh, maybe 1095 so you know each individual model you'll have to double check but this is 5160 and so is the afghan now this is their marine raider bowie and it's kind of like kind of like that one in that it's big and heavy and can do you can chop some branches with this but you know <laughs> i mean the piercing ability of this and just the slashing and slicing ability you know it's half it's halfway a heavy work tool and half weapon, formidable weapon. So you can decide if you, if you need that. But this is one of their most popular. Just I think just the appearance alone has gotten a lot of people to just, you know, get, get in touch with your manliness and buy this. Um, 
I do like it a lot. I have used mine, not as much as that one. I do feel that that's just a, a little bit more practical. But, yeah, I mean, if you need a giant Bowie knife, I definitely recommend this. Now, those three knives up there, you know, those again, those are military type knives. And that doesn't necessarily mean weapon, you know, a military knife is a, a soldier's field knife. Soldier's fixed blade can be used for many different tasks. And then in the back of your mind, there's always the possibility, all right, maybe you would have to use it as a weapon as well. So those are, you know, multi-purpose, multi-function knives. This one is a Mark III Navy combat knife. Oh, and I do have the sheaths for all those. They're, they're actually right next to me, but, uh, you know. I, I had to have everything fit in the screen, but yeah, this is a, a Navy Mark III combat knife, and yeah, you could picture, you know, you could picture some SEALs doing some damage with this. Now, here is a classic. I've had this for many years, too. Recently, um, repolished it a little bit. It was, it was trying to rust, but I fixed it in time. But yeah, this is their... Air Force survival knife, sometimes called the pilot survival knife, but you can still get these for, I believe, around 35 sometimes. And, you know, just because it's a survival knife doesn't mean you can't use it. It's just a general purpose outdoors knife, camp knife. Yeah, this is a beauty. And the prices on many of these are very reasonable. All right, so I'll include a full list of links, and you can just shop around for yourself. All right, but what is the new knife? So this is my newest OKC knife. Can you read that there? Hold on. It's the Blackbird SK4. Full tang, of course, it's G10. Now this has a four inch blade of 154 cm steel. And I gotta say, beautiful blade, love the blade shape. I love how simple and efficient it is. Came sharp, it's got a full flat grind, and you know, it just has a little bit of a sharpening choil. But overall, they've made this simple and efficient. It's, it's kind of the opposite of many knives today. It's not overly complicated. It's not trying to be, you know, they didn't stick a bottle opener on the spine or any freaking craziness like that. To me, this would be uh, either a bushcraft type knife or outdoor utility, just general purpose outdoors knife, camp knife. I will definitely test it out. This knife comes in two different blade lengths. Like this is the four inch version, but there is one that's more around five inch blade length. And you may well want the longer one. It really depends on your needs and preferences. I wanted, I thought this was a good size. And because this is a shorter blade, uh, just it's wider right? Relative to its length, the blade is wider, so I just like that ratio, right? But I'll include links to uh, both of the models of this, and you can take a look at the other one. Uh, the longer one is actually more widely reviewed on YouTube. The, I've See, this has been around for a while, um, right? So I've had time, I mean, I've been considering this for several years, watching people's videos, finally pulled the trigger on it, now here is the sheath that it came with. All right, you see how that all goes? Adjustable retaining strap right there. All right, so that's my new OKC knife. And as I said, I just thought it's a, a simple, efficient design that appealed to me. I hope you like seeing it. And one more blade from OKC. Yeah, it's hard to fit this in the shot, but there you go. One of their machetes. Right, with it's got that's a protective feature, it's not a trench knife, that's a protective handguard. All right, so this is I, I highly recommend OKC machetes. They this one is about 22 inches in blade length, but they also have 18 inch blade length and 12 inch blade length, right? And I believe this was around it was like $22 when I bought it years ago. A lot of people already own an Ontario machete, but uh, yeah, highly recommended. The price is right. Uh, they use high carbon steel in their machetes. All right, YouTube. Well, I hope you enjoyed my company profile sort sort of thing on OKC. Yeah, I definitely 
really like the company and their products. Again, okay, see, please bring back that Afghan design. Thing is a total beast. All right, but moving right along. Another company that I recommend is Condor Tool and Knife. Now I recently got a new blade by Condor, a large blade. Which one did you choose? You know, this is a little catalog that came with my newest acquisition. Yeah, if you like blades, you're gonna love Condor. In this, in this little booklet alone, I've seen about 10 different blades that they introduced in the last year that I would like to try out and that I think are pretty much winners. That's definitely one of them. That is as well. But yeah, I mean, if, if you like blades, check out this company. So what did I get? Well, they're calling this their big leaf machete. This is the sheath that it comes with. So my newest blade is this, the big leaf machete designed by Matt Graham. Now that is one big blade. The, the blade length on this, 13 and a quarter inches. It's kind of a barong design, you know? Similar blade shape to the, the barongs we have in the Philippines. A half my family is from the Philippines and we love barongs. You know, this blade shape, good for piercing, good for slashing, good for slicing. So if you have to slash your way through some soft vegetation, you know, that classic task of a machete, this will do the job well. And you see on the blade, it says 1095 HC, high carbon. You know, most of my condors are 1075, so the use of the 1095, interesting that they chose to go with that. I do consider that an upgrade, so that's good. It's got micarta handle scales. Beautiful big blade, can't wait to test it out. Now there was a slight problem with mine, but I was able to fix it. When this arrived, there was a little bend, like a tiny, just the last, the last few, whatever, millimeters of the tip, it was bent. You know, that must have happened in shipping because this is a heavy blade. So if the package was placed uh, tip down, it the weight of it hitting into stuff could have, that probably is what bent the tip. But I was able to repair it um, just very carefully. I took one of my multi-tools and I, very carefully bent that tip back, so now it's straight. All right, but hopefully that will not happen to you. You know, you're getting good materials, you're getting a nice micarta, and when you see it in person, if you have it in hand, there really is a lot you can do with a blade like this. I mean, machete considered the most important survival tool in the jungle. I mean, aside from your brain, which knows how to use it, hopefully, all right, I will include a link to this, but also to my uh, top 10 or maybe top 20 picks from the product line of Condor Tool and Knife. All right, check those out. Please try to use those links. They do help keep the channel rolling. Now, another company that I like, Bastinelli Creations. Look at that, look at that box art. That is, that is art right there. All right, Bastinelli Creations is the knife company uh, of knife maker uh, Bastien Coves, right? And I hope I pronounce that correctly. It is a French knife maker. And obviously I'm not French, but I do the best I can. All right, so yeah, hardcore Frenchman. He does have a YouTube channel. And well, that, what's in that box? Yeah, you, you know it's a small knife because it fits in that box. Newest acquisition from Bastinelli Creations. What I love about this designer, he does not apologize for making weapon designs, efficient, brutal, vicious designs. Now that doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to harm someone, right? That's on you. A knife is just an inanimate object. It, do it doesn't uh, get up and stab someone on its own accord, right? A knife, it's a cutting tool, right? But he makes some pretty brutal designs. I am pretty familiar uh, with his work because I own these two and have for a number of years. That, that nice little folder there, that's a, a BBR2 frame lock. And that knife is a Raptor. Uh, and I've heard that that's in some movie. Didn't see the movie, but I believe it. I mean, it looks kind of futuristic. It's a little forward set relative to the handle, which has all kinds of uses. Uh, from utility to making it a better slasher. 
and you see the piercing ability as well. Yeah, so that Raptor, wicked. And that I just bought as a little EDC knife because that actually has a fairly short blade. But he has many folders that are kind of similar to that one. But, you know, three and a half inch, four inch, uh, four and a half inch long blade. So I will include all those links. But I have to warn you, these are not cheap. All right, so here's the new knife. This is, he's calling it the uh, Diagnostic Karambit. All right, as you can see, you know, this is a, a concealable knife. It's kind of a last ditch knife, but also uh, has a lot of utility function as well. All right, he's, you know, karambit because it's got a ring, but it's, it's not like a normal karambit that you would use, uh, you know, like here, right? So it's, it's more of a sometimes called a talon type of knife. Yeah, now it is flat on this side. All right, so chisel ground. Mmm, I know what you're thinking. Ah, you don't like chisel ground. You know, in this case, it works. Uh, and to his credit, he's actually posted a demonstration of this very uh, design on his YouTube channel. Yes, Bastinelli has a, they have a YouTube channel, and I will include a link, but check that out. You know, have you ever needed a, basically a steel claw? And right, how are you supposed to hold it? Well, you're supposed to basically, you know, it, it's like this, All right? So that's like an anchor, and that is a single finger groove and you see the texture here right that is for your thumb now you may be skeptical is that a toy would it work would it be useful ah you know if you weren't a little bit skeptical I wouldn't want you watching because uh, it's a mark of intelligence you know especially a defensive a defensive blade I mean it, that could really be the difference between survival and not in worst case scenarios, right? But as I said, Bastinelli actually has a demo on his channel. So underneath the link, you can get this on Amazon. Underneath the link to that for Amazon, I will include a link to the demo video that Bastinelli Creations has right, on the YouTube, their YouTube channel, right? But I, you know, I'm glad to see that he actually demonstrates this stuff because without seeing the video, I, I might, I probably wouldn't have purchased this if I hadn't uh, seen the proof in the pudding or the proof in the, uh, I won't say blood, but the proof in the flesh, let's say. Now, as far as weapon designs like those two, I have absolutely no moral qualms or objections to any weapon design because a weapon, it's just an object. It's neutral. The only good or evil is in who is holding that weapon and what they do with it. Weapons can be used uh, to create evil and harm. They can also be used to protect you, your loved ones, and everything you love. And my dad was in the army and he was in Vietnam. And none of what you see today, no, your house, your car, uh, peaceful places to walk, you know, you can walk in the park, you can go shopping. None of that would exist without armed men defending it rest assured. And now as far as weapons within society, you know, the threat is not always an invading army. There's plenty of criminals that want to do harm to you and your loved ones. So again, I, what, what are you supposed to do? Go all Bruce Lee and try to fight off uh, gangs and uh, armed criminals with your bare hands? Of course not. Of course not. That's why I support the, uh, I support the lawful possession of firearms or stuff like this, or a baseball bat, whatever you can use and whatever's legal in your area, I fully support that. So I have no moral qualms about uh, designs of weapons. Bad guys will always be armed. They, they can whip up a deadly shank in prison with just cobbled together materials. They're always going to be armed, right? Denying yourself an efficient tool, tool of defense, that's not going to disarm the bad guys. All right, YouTube, I've got an interesting find for you in the budget category. This is the, the Bax Field Knife. That's what they're calling it. Uh, Bax B-A-X. Right now, Sheffield. Sheffield is actually a, a famous uh, city in the UK 
famous for making knives. Now this knife was only $15 and I have to say I feel like it is a very good deal for that price. Uh, it is made in China. You know, as I said, Sheffield, famous name in cutlery in the UK. But of course, to get this price, got to be made somewhere else. They do actually make, they do actually still make knives in Sheffield, England, but they're going to be more expensive than this. But I will include some links to those as well, all right, as well as the link to this budget option. All right now, the sheath on this was not very good. It's just, uh, you know, it's kind of a cheapo sheath, almost almost like an, an M-Tech type sheath. But uh, for the price, I mean, you're buying, you know, you're buying this for the knife. I like the blade shape. I like the simple design. It, it almost reminds me of, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of expensive knives that are kind of use that blade shape because that, that blade shape with small variations, I mean, that's used all over the place in hunting knives. So I, I can't really fault them for copying because there's like 20 knives I could mention that have a similar shape. But yeah, I thought you'd like to see it. You know, trying to help out people that are on a tight budget. And you want to see it in hand. The blade length is four and a half inches. All right, so yeah, it fits my hand pretty well. And there's there's a lot of extra room. So even if you have kind of large hands, yeah, this will do. Now they do list the steel on this as 420 stainless. And that is a TPR handle. Basically, it's a type of hard rubber. All right, that's all right for the price. Yeah, Sheffield, famous name, now made in China, Sheffield, China. No, just kidding. I understand, I understand to, to have it at this price, they have to import it. But yeah, I'll include a link to this. I had to wait a while for this. It was on back order, so I kind of forgot about it. You know, it was, I back ordered it and then one day it arrived and I was like, this thing ain't bad. And so you want to, you need a budget hunting knife? Yeah, check out that link. All right, I have an update on this Elk Ridge Bushcraft knife. First of all, I've already done a full review of this knife. That was a while ago. I'll include a link to the review and a link to the uh, Amazon listing. This thing is only $20, and I have to say, it is worth it, you know. Uh, I felt it was worth it when I did the review, but since that time, I've actually spoken to a lot of other people that own this knife because... I don't think there's many reviews of it out there. Uh, so I've like talked to everybody who has this has looked up, you know, a review and ended up talking to me. And yeah, from all the feedback or most of the feedback that I've gotten, people are really liking this for the price. Right now, this is a little different philosophy than a Mora knife because traditionally, you know, bushcrafting on a budget people will buy a Mora knife, and I have many Moras, but this is, well, it's just more heavily built. It's, uh, it's wider, you know, more grind area to work with. So if you want, if you favor this kind of knife as opposed to like the fast and light philosophy of a Mora, you might want to consider this. Also, it's just, you know, the, the handle is bigger too. So if you have large hands, this will be good for you. Now my hands are medium large and look how much extra room, right? So if you're a dude with like XL hands and you want bushcraft on a budget, that's what that's one place this fits in. And as you can see, I have beat this thing up and you can, you know, you can see that in the review. Comes with the sheath, fire starter. Yeah, this is held up well. I still think it's a great deal. Uh, you know, we're getting a lot of new subscribers every month so for all the new people I know it's hard to sort through over a thousand videos on the channel so occasionally I'll just you know point you in the right direction to ones that I think you'll particularly be interested in bushcraft is huge now as well as you know being on a budget prepping on a budget bushcraft on a budget I think it's time all right to give this knife a look so check out the link they do support the channel all right, switching gears. Do you need a gigantic meat cleaver? No? What kind of person are you? Get You are dead to me. Everybody needs a gigantic meat cleaver. All right, so this meat cleaver is about, is about a 10-inch blade length, which is pretty much around the largest um, 
cleaver you can usually get. Right, and this uh, this was uh, 30 something dollars. I'll include a link. I, I believe it's made in Pakistan, right? So, you know, it's a big crude hunk of metal that cleaves through things. Now I use a cleaver all the time uh, in preparing food, but I use about a six inch cleaver because I'm usually cooking up either chicken, turkey, duck, basically any type of bird is usually what I'm, what I'm cutting up like, you know, ch like Chinese chef style with a cleaver. So what would you use a 10 inch cleaver for? Huh. Well, I know they eat goat in Pakistan because I've seen YouTube videos, uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, they do eat like, they eat goat. Uh, also in Jamaica, they like goat. So may, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's what they use to chop up the, chop off the goat's leg or, you know, the carcass of the goat. I don't know, but if you need to cook up a goat, you need this. Now, I don't have any practical use for this, uh, but I do know how to throw cleavers. Actually, I have a video on that that YouTube so, so graciously demonetized my cleaver throwing video. I guess they thought it wasn't family friendly. Come on, what family doesn't like throwing cleavers? Come on, YouTube. But... Uh, yeah, I, th I throw cleavers basically the same way that you throw a tomahawk. Now uh, here's a closer look at the cleaver. You see it is full tang. It's basically a big crude hunk of metal. The curve to the blade makes this able to slice better than some other uh, cleavers. So this can chop and it can slice. Uh, it did have a little bit of a burr on one side of the edge. Uh, basically when they grind the edge onto something, uh, it can create a burr on the opposite part, and, you know, they, they should remove that burr at the factory, but I will just remove it myself. You can remove it in a variety of ways. And next up, some folding knives from Kaiser. Yeah, it's not all fixed blades, so what are these? Well, hold on. Magic of editing. Boom. Whoa, how did that happen? They just opened themselves, I swear. All right, what are these knives? Let's go from left to right. We got the Flashbang, the Dukes the Roach, and those first three are currently around uh, $70 right now. I'll include the links. And these last two, that's the Toro and the Soze. Now, the Toro, designed by Matt Diskin, that's, well, these are both S35VN steel. Nice. Titanium frame lock. Those are in more the collectible price range category. That's currently around $200. But I gotta say, I mean, titanium frame lock with that steel and that designer, I, I like that knife quite a bit. I'll include the links and uh, the Elijah Isham designed that one. Right, I'm not sure the current price, but I'll, I'll include a link and you can check it. Now about these, you might have seen other reviews with these, but these are new versions, or should I say the same knives, but... Kaiser is using a different steel. These are all N690, right? Whereas before, I think they were using VG10 on all these, right? So these are the N690 steel versions, right? So I did ask, I contacted Kaiser and I asked them, you know, why, why did you uh, change the steel? And what they told me was that uh, they want to try new steels and that some of their customers had suggested that steel. All right, um, you know, I think these are going to do really well in the European market because that steel, it's an Austrian stainless steel that's very popular in uh, Italian knives. Uh, uh, Fox Knives Italy, for example, right? So pretty well known uh, in Europe, so I think these will sell well over there. Not really sure about it, you know, that's not very well known in America, uh, so I don't know how well these will do. But then again, VG10 has kind of been on the decline, at least, uh, uh, people used to like it a lot more, like about, he's like eight years ago, if I remember correctly. But yeah, since VG10 has kind of not been as popular lately, Hey, they, they, might as, they might as well change it. But speaking of that steel and Italian knives, remember this? This is the Fox Knives Profili. It's not made anymore, but uh, this is N690, right? And yeah, that's just an example of, a, of one of those uh, 
Italian knives that use that steel. And I do have the fixed blade version of this too. They should bring this back. This is a pretty cool knife. Now of these knives, I definitely like the Roach the best. You know, it just, to me, I mean, first of all, the blade shape kind of reminds me of a, of a, a Barong machete, but now these, you know, these are a lot easier to carry because look how much wider this is than that, but this is kind of large and in charge, I think, yeah. This is definitely my favorite of the three. And hold on, let's, let's uh, try some flipping action. Oh yeah. Hold on, let me try to do it without uh, without any movement at all, except my finger, of course. Nice! Yeah, that's smooth. Yeah, the roach, and I think they have, um, you know, different handle, handle colors. Alright, but this was just a preview. Stay tuned for my full reviews of those three. Right, these were sent to me for testing and review by Kaiser. And the pricier stuff. I have to say, I've looked at every Kaiser knife. Like, every knife they have out, I have looked at. And that is my favorite. The matte diskin folder. It's just, you know, the size, the blade shape, the usefulness of that slicing, piercing design. And it just looks really classy. And it also looks really useful. We shall see. I'm going to do a full review of both of these. And I will cut up a bunch of stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to keep that pristine, you know, it's not going to be a, a mantelpiece. Right, these were sent to me by Kaiser for testing and review. So hey, if you do that, I will use it, even if uh, many people who buy that might just buy it as a collectible, or maybe just light use. But I will use it. And now that, that knife up there, the Elijah Isham design, that, I mean, just look at it, you know, it's a collectible weapon, which is an odd category because, you, you know, a lot of weapons are, you know, kind of cheap, rugged, and disposable, you know, anything from an AK to a prison shank is what people think of as weapons, but that's a classy weapon design. And now for YouTube purposes, I have to say, when I say weapon, I don't mean something you would necessarily actually use, right? Uh, if you got a World War II collector who collects like a an antique machine gun, right? He's not collecting that to to refight World War II, all right? So so chill out, you know, YouTube censors, right? Enough said on that. But yeah, I'm not going to cut up too much. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with that, like as far as cutting stuff up, because it makes no sense uh, with such a stabby design. It makes no sense to cut up like boxes or bushcraft. Right, so I'll probably just talk about, um, I'll talk about it as a, as a collectible piece. How about that? So those reviews are upcoming, but, well, that, that Matt Diskin folder has been out for a while. Right, so you can, already, you can find many reviews of that, and you don't have to wait for mine. I will include links in the text description box. Like I said, $200 about that for that, you know, that is pricey. But I gotta say it's a good deal relative to the rest of the market. And while we're here, let's try out the, the flipper on this. Nice. Very nice. Can I do it with my off hand? Let, let us see. Hold on. You gotta be careful. Don't... Oh. Yeah, that was my off hand, so... Come on. There we go. Decisive. Well, gotta be careful. That that is sharp. Okay, S thirty five VN and Kaiser gives you sharp edges. Nice stone wash on that. But all right, that's all. That's all for now. Wait till the review. Next item. This is an interesting find. This is the Hobbit knife. This is made in Spain. The steel on this is MV fifty eight. All right, the price tag was $70 and the uh, blade length two and three quarters inches. So a very small knife could be a backup knife, a, a small bushcraft knife, a little camp knife, or a skinner. Yeah, this knife is extremely comfortable. It's full tang. It's got some jimping there. Yeah, beautiful handle scales on this. 
All right, family portrait. So that, that top knife, the large one, is a Geotech 37. Now Geotech is, that is a sister company to the, or maybe brand, to CDS. So all three of these knives are basically made in the same factory. And these all use that same MV58 steel. I'm pretty familiar with that steel. I've, I have at least three knives that I've done full reviews of that all use that steel. So you can check out those reviews. I'll include uh, links to those videos. I've done a full review of that large one and a full review of that one as well. Right, that is a CDS. I forget what the uh, what what the number designation of that one is, but it'll be in the in the video links. Right, so yeah, the, one of the reasons why I was willing to buy the Hobbit knife is because I'm very familiar with this steel and with the company, and they have never failed me. Right, so check out the full reviews of those two knives, and if you like them. You know, consider getting the Hobbit if you need a knife in that size category. I mean, as far as that, that like mini fixed blade category, it is one of the, uh, the nicer blades you can get. All right, so the links will all be in the text description box. And if that sells out, uh, apologies in advance, because that actually has already sold out one time, and that's kind of what made me jump on it when they finally came back in stock. I was like, hey, I was considering that knife and apparently a bunch of other people were also considering it because they, they had all bought it. So yeah, hopefully that stays in stock. I'll include all the relevant links. Next up, a knife from Finland. Yeah, this is a Kellum knife. That is a reindeer uh, antler handle. All right, now this is a small knife. It's the blade length is two and a quarter inches, but they do have a longer version, right? So I'll include the links to the different models, right? But now this little knife, first of all, wicked little slicer. This is the type of thing you would carry if you, you need to carry something small, but you don't want to carry a folder. Just for size reference, right? It's like a, a three finger, three finger handle but sharp as all hell, and it is fairly thin, all right, because, you know, small knife, it's not, it's not, it would just wouldn't make sense to make it real thick at that blade length, all right, so you got to be careful with this, you know, it's a slicer, and you could also use it as a small skinner, all right, the, uh, the steel is listed as just carbon steel, so I'll have to, uh, see if I can ferret out, uh, you know, exactly what, carbon steel it is. Now the price on this is $25. I do feel that's a good price. If you're familiar with Kellum, uh, they actually have a lot more pricey knives, so this is one of their uh, more budget-friendly offerings. But yeah, as a, a mini fixed blade EDC, as a backup, or as a small skinner, yeah, I thought it, I thought it was uh, good for the price. Make an excellent gift, too. Yeah, you need a knife from Finland. We love Finland in America, by the way. I don't know what Finland is really like, but in America, we just think everyone from your country is just this rugged, you know, uh, totally savvy survivalist outdoorsman. So I, I, I really hope that is what it's like. That is what it's like, isn't it? But anyway, the link will be in the text description box. Hope you enjoyed seeing this blade. All right, YouTube, well, I hope you've enjoyed seeing this wide variety of blades. Right, and as I said, if you do support the channel and you're pro-knife and a good human being, all right, check out the links. They will be very helpful to you, and they do help support the channel. All right, until the next episode, this We All Juggle Knives, I'm out.